Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Athern and Bachman 200 ton crane and we're going to see which one is a better value for the money. Now these two cranes seem to be the most prominent ones online if you go and just Google HO scale 200 ton crane. These are the two that come up, the Bachman and the Athern. Now I picked these up down in Waukesha, Wisconsin at a wonderful retailer called Hiawatha Hobbies. They have endless supplies of G scale all the way down to Z scale of anything you could want or need. That place is awesome. If you're ever down in the area, go check it out. So we're gonna start by unboxing one of these and I think we're gonna start with the Bachman one. Now my goal today is to see which one is a little more bang for the buck. And we're gonna take a couple categories into consideration such as the quality of the model, the features of the model, and the performance of the model such as how it navigates track and my poorly laid layout. So let's get started by unboxing this Bachman 200 ton crane. Whoa. So we got a little paperwork here and this actually says 250 ton crane. Mine does not come with the floodlight. I got the, as you can see, MOW one. Mine did not come with the floodlight car. Mine instead came with um, one of these cabin cars. So it says here on the paperwork which window controls what and if we look at the box here it looks like we have a knob that will stick in the windows to control either the crane arm or the hook itself. So let's get these out of the styrofoam. I'm going to leave the knob in there right now. We're going to start with the house car. Now this is a nice looking car, very simple in design. Got a little bit of underside detailing, not much detailing. It's all, it's all plastic, except for the metal wheels and the screws. It seems like everything else on this is plastic, including the knuckle couplers is, are plastic. Free rolling wheels, and we are actually going to check, based off of almost everybody's suggestion on the last video, I got an NMRA gauge. So we're actually going to check the gauging of the wheels right away on these. And I'm really curious about the gauging of the wheels on the Athern model. Since in my last video, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. The stock Athern wheels that came on those hopper cars did not seem to navigate my layout very well. So I'd be interested to see how this stock Athern model performs. First wheel set seems good. Second wheel set's good. Moving on to the back. Third wheel set is good. And the fourth wheel set. Oh, the fourth wheel set is a little tight. So the fourth wheel set's a little bit tight. So that'll be interesting to see if we have any problems with it being under gauged. Now let's get the crane out of the box here. So here is the crane. I'm gonna move the styrofoam out of the way. So again, it's a nice looking model, very simple. I mean, MOW is usually very simple, nothing too complicated in the paint scheme itself. Uh, again, looks like pretty much all plastic construction. We have a little roof hatch that opens up with the uh, crane boom. So we'll show you that in a second. Looking at these, Looks like the looks like the three-wheel trucks on there, and again, looks like the only metal on this model is in the wheels itself. Looks like everything else is plastic. Well, let's test out this crane function with the knob. Now, according to the instructions, this knob has a square hole. These windows have square pegs in them. 
And so it looks like by sticking the peg in the window, we can control different functions of the crane, such as I'm lowering the hook right now, raising the hook. Now I'm gonna move it to the second window, and this is gonna raise and lower the boom. So you can see there the door opens up with the boom, and that's a very nice looking bar the uh, knob. It's a fairly nice looking, at least from the distance here, a fairly nice looking model. So let's set this train off to the side here and let's take a look at the Athern 200 ton crane. Now I went with this Arizona and California paint job because it was, out of the two, it was the cheaper of the two. The other one was, I believe, $67. And this one I thought actually looked cooler. So let's pull this on out. Got some paperwork we'll take a look at. So it looks like we have paperwork for the boom car and for the crane itself. So here's the boom car. This one does not have a cabin on it. This one is just a flat bed with a boom cradle on it. And uh, so just kind of a general yeah, option optional parts not included in all models just a general parts diagram and we'll just glance at the boom car one or sorry the crane manual and so here is a exploded diagram as well all right let's get this guy out of the packaging and i will say right off the bat this atherin packaging is a lot nicer than the bachman one uh, the Blackman one just coming in uh, a styrofoam piece. So let's start with the boom car here. All right, so here is the Arizona and California boom car. Very simple in design, a lot, lot heavier than the Bachman boom car without having a cabin on it, which speaks volume to the construction of the Athern model. And the reason it's a lot heavier is this plate underneath of the structure right here this plate is uh, metal so that's going to give it a lot more weight let's check the gauging on these ather wheels real quick all right and the front set is good it has a little bit of back and forth movement but not bad second set also fine third set third set looks to be good and the fourth set also looks to be good so we shouldn't have any issues there let's go ahead and uh, move on to the actual crane so let's get the crane out here now right away I could say that this one is heavier than the Bachman one albeit not by a whole lot but it is you can feel it is heavier Comparing the two right away, the Athern one is actually a bit larger than the Bachman one. For roughly being the same model, the Athern one is quite a bit larger than the Bachman one. And that might just be because the Athern one is actually to scale and the Bachman one could be modified. Now looking at this, it looks like the majority of this crane is also plastic, but if I hold the assembly here and flip it over, we do have a metal plate on the bottom side here, along with all metal wheels. Now there is a difference in how these cranes operate, and that being, oh, actually I didn't even notice that. This uh, Athern crane is a lot more, it's a lot looser when you get beyond the initial, say, 45 degrees. It becomes a lot looser in its pivot, uh, but that initial 45 degrees is very, very stiff. It does seem to have a center detent locking point, but the main difference in how they operate comes down to the tool they use. I actually had to do a little bit of research because I did open this up earlier and I wanted to get kind of an initial feel for both the models. And I could not for the life of me figure out where the tool was in the packaging to raise and lower the boom and hook. So I had to do a little bit of digging and eventually I found that it is right here, sneakily taped to the packaging. It's this little right angle tool. 
that is taped in there. So we'll have to get that out like so. You can see we have kind of a flat blade key on there and that is what will stick into the side of the crane. Now one thing I do appreciate about the Bachman model is when you don't have the knob in there to move the boom or the hook, it's not impeding on the model. There's no extra holes or anything in the model that take away from the aesthetics or looks of the model. Whereas with this Athern one, you have an extra hole for this keyway on both sides of the model instead of through the windows or something like that, which could have been done because these windows are actually clear. There's no panes or anything in them. So a little interesting design choice there. And I think the Bachman actually wins a little bit aesthetically on that. Let's see how this little crank performs. So the Bachman one was very easy to get in and lined up. This Athern one, this Athern crank is a little bit harder to actually get in the correct position to move. So there we are, we are finally in, and I believe this is going to be the hook movement, if I'm not mistaken. Yup, so you can see the hook actually drops there. It's, it's actually fairly stiff. So with this being on the track, let's see if we're, where we're on the table here. If you actually wanted to move this, it's a fairly, whoop, and we've popped out of the socket. This mechanism seems a little bit more cumbersome than the Bachman one, which with the Bachman, we can just take, and it's a one-handed operation. Yeah, it might move backwards a little bit or forwards a little bit on the track, but it's a one-handed operation to really move or actuate this, this crane. Whereas with this Athern one, First, we gotta line up this crank, find the flat spot, there it is. Then, there's no, I mean, there's no way you're doing this one-handed unless you're doing it super slow with your fingers like this. I mean, there's really no way you can actually use the crank feature of this tool without using two hands. So let's take a look at the boom functionality of it. And I'm just gonna do a quick test here and then I will move the camera to the floor so we can see the boom action on both of these from more of a floor level. So don't worry, I'll get there. So once we find that flat spot in there, we can then use this crank to pull the actual boom up. There it is, up in an extended position. Let's bring it back down. Oh, interesting. So this boom rigging, while the crane arm does move, this flap doesn't really like to move. It's very, very kind of stuck in there. I don't know how much I like that. Let, let me get the camera on the floor and let's see these at more of a, an eye level. All right, so let's start with the Athern crane here. Pardon the 3D printers mess and everything else on my workbench. But let's take a look at this Athern crane first. So I'm just gonna drop the hook and such first. I can manage to get this crank pin. This is actually really annoying. So let's go ahead and drop the hook on the crane see that hook come down like such and we'll raise it back up Oop. push the I'm gonna push the crank back in there so I don't I'm not gonna fall out because that's very annoying so now I've moved the crank to the other side and there is the boom being raised and you know I think it should really look more like that but this this rigging mechanism in here and this door. This door is very, very cheap and, and flimsy in my opinion. 
let's bring the boom back down and as you can see this that rigging and this door it finally did fall there so now we can see that the rigging and the door did finally come down when the boom got far enough but it really should be going down the whole time with the boom let's see how the Bachman performs all right so here's the Bachman crane I'm gonna take and just move this boom now well, let's move the hook while we got it in the up position so we'll move the knob to the front door very easy to put in oops there's the hook and we will just spin like such and it drops the hook down pull it back up oh, our knob did fall out actually so up we go one thing to note with this knob is that on the knob if it is pushed in all the way it does actually rub up against the rivets on the side of the model so just be aware of that if uh, to not wear down these rivets so let's go ahead and lower the boom now this door this door feels a lot more stable especially side to side it feels a lot less crunchy or something like that with Whereas the Athern model, you could see, if I tip it a little sideways, you could see how much play is in that front to back and side to side. Whereas the Bachman model here, you could see there's a little bit of play side to side, almost nothing front and back. And I'm trying to do this left-handed here. As we lower this rigging down, you could see that the rigging and the door do both come down all the way and pretty pretty flush and simultaneously as you're doing it so let's look at these two cranes side by side i think from a detail perspective and from just a visual perspective i like the athern model better of course it's a more complex design it's a little more funky with the green instead of a normal a more normal color such as say the gray of the mow bachman one I like how large the Athern one is. It's a little bit larger than the Bachman one, which funnily enough, the larger Athern one claims to be a 200 ton crane and the smaller Bachman one claims to be a 250 ton crane, but I digress. I think for looks, even with the holes for the crank, I think I would give it to the Athern over the Bachman. So off of purely looks, I have to give it to the Athern. I think it's a cooler livery. They're a little bit more picked out in detail, such as on the hooks, you have separately painted sections of the hook and the paint job in general, the Athern's cooler, but honestly, they're fairly similar to me right now, but let's take them over to the track where we might see a little bit more of a discrepancy. Alrighty guys, so I got the Bachman crane down on the track right now. I'm gonna run a couple different tests with each cranes individually, and then I'm going to run them together. So first we're going to test out the Bachman and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test it running with the boom laying on the extra car. Now this one doesn't come with a cradle for the boom like the Athern one does so I've just kind of set this down on the other car. We're going to see how having that boom down with the pivot of the crane affects the running. And hauling these cranes is an engine that I haven't featured much on the channel. It is my little Tyco 040 switcher. Now he's in a little rough condition, but he should do the job with these cranes. So let's get him going and let's take a look at how this Bachman crane performs with the boom laying down. Oh, what a good start. All right, so here he goes around the layout first curve looks like the crane has pivoted a little bit and it is now past the point of the other car let's see how it goes around these curves this is a little bit of an s bend here oh doesn't seem like anything's derailed quite yet oh never mind i take that back Well, we are still looking good. The engine has stopped. I might have to switch which engine's running this. 
So as you can see, the boom arm is a little bit off to the side. Now we're gonna see how it does through the tunnel back here. Oh, we have knocked over a tree. We have taken a tree with us into the tunnel. We have made it through, still on the rails. Let's send him on the outside line, see if he gets over these switches or not. No, he doesn't. He must have only one wheel picking up power again. But we're still on the track and the boom is kind of centered again. A little bit rough over there. Let's see how it gets on the bridge. A little bit rough as well. And back around the S-Bend. And it did it okay. Well, all in all, I mean, it's it's running okay. Also, this engine's picking up speed for some reason. This thing's it. Oh, jeez. Well, we've now pulled the tree into the tunnel. And now this thing's flying. So now back down to a reasonable speed. Um, the crane's fine. It's running okay. Uh, it's still not ideal. It's kind of, as you can see, snapping over with that larger hook. So let's try it running with the boom up and see then how it compares to the Athern. So on the boom down on the car test, it did okay. It's never derailed, actually. It stayed on the track the entire time. But now we are going to take and raise the boom up with the knob. And we're going to see how that affects the running. So now the boom is up a little bit. Let's see how it runs. Go! Go! Damn it! Well, I've done a little locomotive swap since the small shunter wasn't running great. So this is my Milwaukee Road Elko. I don't know the exact model of it, but we're gonna now take it around the layout with this engine. Off we go. All right, so here we go now with the boom in the extended or raised position. And it's definitely running a lot smoother. It seems that the boom does swing out wider and we've hit a snag on the track. So the boom definitely does swing out a bit wider with it up, which was to be expected. But let's see how it fares with the tunnel and trees associated with the tunnel. Oh, it did hit the roof of the tunnel. And it hit it again on the way out, but still not derailed. So let's send this on the outside line for a quick lap. And if you're wondering what the caboose is for in the middle, it is a coupling conversion car. I can't swap the style of couplings on the locomotive, so I have a caboose that I put a old style coupler to knuckle coupler on. So it looked like it has no problems on the outer side of the loop. Pretty impressive. Let's see what the Athern provides. All right, so I've got the Athern crane down onto the track. First test we're gonna try, like with the Bachman, was having the boom in the lowered position. I have a feeling that the Athern is going to struggle a little bit more with this one because of how tight that initial pivot is. But we'll just have to see, and we're gonna find out right now. So here we go around the first corner, and oh, oh no. Oh no, we have already derailed on the first corner. That's not a good start. And my guess is because this is just so tight in here. But let's try it again, just to be sure. All right, so I've got the crane back in the cradle. Let's try it again. Around the first corner here. Well, and we're pretty severely derailed on the cradle car. Yeah, that whole front truck's come off. And again, yeah, we haven't pivoted at all. I guess this Athern is just not gonna run around the layout with the boom so low. So I guess let's try it with the boom raised and see if it performs any better. All right, now you can see I have the boom raised up on the Athern car. And to give it a little bit more of a chance, I paired it with a smoother locomotive. It's a Bachmann half unit. 
So we'll see how the boom being raised and a little bit smoother performer affects this Atherton car. So around the first corner, no problems. We get pretty close to that building, but beyond that, it's no real problems. Try this little S bend here. Nope, no issues there either. Still so far no derailments. It does look really good going down the track. Let's see how it does with the tunnel. It does clear the tunnel. I put it at a good height this time and no problems there. We will send it on the outside straight. And no problems with derailing anymore with that boom raised. And I can almost guarantee you it's because of the pivot on that crane being so stiff. Hopefully it doesn't take out a tree here. Nope, we're good. Well, let's try running them together and see what they look like running together and see how they perform. All right, so I've got both the cranes running together now and they do, it looks really, really cool having two cranes and kind of a, kind of a breakdown train or a, a really nice maintenance train. It looks really, really cool. And in terms of which crane is a better bang for the buck, I think it's all dependent on what you're looking to get out of a crane. Are you looking for something that's a little bit more functional and actually easy to use as a crane? Or are you looking for something that is a little bit more realistic looking and less functional as an actual crane, but a little bit higher quality piece of rolling stock? If you're looking for the latter, I think I'd recommend the Athern. It's a higher quality looking, a little bit more detailed, and it's definitely fits the bill if you're looking for an aesthetic crane. But I think if you're looking for a more actually functional as a crane, then the Bachman one's a little bit easier to use with the knob being a little bit more intuitive and a little bit easier to actually kit in the assembly than the Atherd crank. So I think that's gonna do it for me guys. It all is kind of dependent on what you want out of it. Both these models are okay in my opinion. I don't think any one of them is stellar, but for around 50 to 60 dollars, they're not too bad. Well, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks again for watching, guys. It's awesome to see the channel grow like it has and hope it continues to do so. Again, thanks for watching. And as always, have a great one.